What are you doing? Writing a suicide note. <laughs> it's very long. <laughs> it's a suicide novel. <laughs> My goodness, you must be depressed. It's not the end of the world, Arthur. Lots of people have no one to go out with on Saturday night. Mother, please. I'm trying to work. Oh, don't mind me. I'll just sit here like a little mouse. I won't say a word. There's always me, you know. Yes, always. I'll go out with you. But no, you don't want to go out with your mother. I quite understand. We'll think of someone else. Someone nice. Don't bother. Yes, I thought of someone. I say I thought of someone. Who? You should ask me these things when I first think of them. Forget it. I have. I don't want to go out anyway. I know. I know. Angela. Angela. Angela who? You know, Angela, before Deirdre. Well, you don't mean Angela Clayton. Yes, yes, I always liked her. We used to walk home from school together. I haven't seen her for 20 years. Perhaps it's time you gave her a call. <laughs> I don't know where she lives anymore. Try her at home. Come on, Mum. No one ends up living where they used to live 20 years ago. You do, Arthur. <laughs> I know, and it's pathetic. If I knew me, I wouldn't want to go out with me. Never mind, Arthur. We'll find someone. We've got our thinking caps on now. Mum, would you mind wearing yours in the other room? I want to get this finished. Oh, I don't want to interrupt your work, Arthur. Good. So, uh, I'll go into the other room, shall I? Yes! Good, good. Um, that's got that settled then. <laughs> There is a way you can find that attractive, intelligent person, that special someone. How? I don't know. I'm just reading about it. It says, Hello, I'm Veronique. I'm 34, slim, dark, attractive, intelligent. <laughs> Not too modest, apparently. <laughs> oh, here's another one. Hi, I'm Mandy. I'm fun, and I'm available for discreet private entertainment. <laughs> it says she does house calls and takes bank card. What does that mean? It means she's... She's a sort of singing doctor. <laughs> and that's not what I'm looking for anyway. No, you want someone to go out with. Oh, yes, 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 here's someone. No more, Mum. No, no, this is someone very nice. Look, you know, what's the name? That's Geraldine Duke from Nationwide. <laughs> yes, she seems very nice. I haven't got a hope of going out with her. Have you asked her? Of course I haven't asked her. Well, how do you know if you haven't tried? You've got to be more positive, Arthur. All right. Maybe I could go out with Geraldine and maybe I could persuade her to leave her husband and run away with me. Or at least go to the pictures, but not by 7.30 tonight. I'm only trying to help. Anyway, even if I did know someone I wanted to go out with, how could I? You don't like me leaving you on your own at night. I don't mind. Oh, that's what you used to say when Deirdre was here. Yes, it is. You don't listen. I'd love you to go out with someone at night, someone nice. Nothing would make me happier. Oh. Well, I wonder who that is. Well, it isn't Geraldine Duke. <laughs> you never know. It might be opportunity knocking. Whoever it is, they're ringing. Oh, no, opportunity knocks, I'm sure of that. <laughs> yes, yes, I was... I was right. This might be just the person you're looking for. No, it isn't. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Maggie. Hello, uh... Deirdre. Yes, yes, that's right. Good to see you. Don't want to interrupt anything. Arthur's busy. He's working. 
No, we were just sitting around talking. Having a laugh, telling jokes. <laughs> you know what it's like around here. Yes. Are you all right? Fine, fine. No, I'm not, actually. Can I talk to you? Sure. Sit down. <laughs> Mum. Mum, how about a cup of tea? Not for me, thank you. <laughs> Isn't there something you should be doing? No, no, I'm quite happy here. I've got my knitting. And it's soundproof wool, is it? What? Deirdre wants to talk to me privately. Oh, oh, I see. No, 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 it's all right. I won't listen. She won't listen. I'm not listening. I can't hear a thing. It's all right, Arthur. No, it isn't. Come on, Mum. Off you go. Oh. I'll make the tea then, will I? That's right. <laughs> Boil some water for your head. And no listening. I may have my faults, but I'm not the sort of person who listens in to other people's private conversations. Good. Well... What did you want to talk about? Oh, nothing very much. David. Who's David? <laughs> Just a minute. Who's David? Someone I was going out with. I see. Past tense. Hmm. And you're a bit upset. <laughs> Silly, isn't it? Tell me about him. What does he do? Nothing yet. He's just finished school. <laughs> How old is he? Eighteen. Eighteen? <laughs> <laughs> you're not going out with someone who's eighteen. If you're going to be critical, I'll go. I'm not being critical. I'm not being the slightest bit critical. Eighteen! He was a very mature eighteen. Oh. We used to have long, long talks about his family, his car, his surfboard. <laughs> God, it was boring. <laughs> anyway, you don't have to worry. It's all over. I told him not to come round anymore. Why? I met his mother. I went to school with her. <laughs> Poor old Deidre. Are you two still out there? <laughs> yes. Just checking. I couldn't hear anything, that's all. I thought you were making tea. Yes. Well, we'll have to forget about that. The pot got broken. <laughs> Don't worry, Maggie, I'm going now. Oh, what a pity. You don't have to go. Yes, I'd better. I must be stopping you from doing something. No. Yes, he's working. But it's Saturday. Aren't you going out? Then he's going out. Uh, tell Deirdre about uh, Geraldine. What's her name? <laughs> Doog. You're not going out with her. Of course I'm not. He's going to ask her. That's why he can't go out in case she rings up. So, you're not doing anything tonight? Nothing special. What about you? No. I'll just go home on my own and boil an egg, if I've got one. We can lend her an egg. <laughs> no, um... Look, what do you think about the idea of you and me, well... Having dinner somewhere? Yes, if you like. A quiet, romantic, candlelit dinner for two? Why not? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> You're not just after my body, are you? I could do worse. Me too. For now, let's just have dinner. Great. Terrific. Well, don't worry about me. <laughs> I'll just be here on my own, but never mind. Well, that's not what you said before. It is what I said before. You don't listen, Arthur. You said you wanted me to go out. Oh, no. I said I'd be very frightened here on my own. All those creaking floorboards and banging windows. Bang, bang, they go. Bang, bang. We haven't got any banging windows. No. One of them's broken and someone might get in and kill me and I know who I'll blame. Oh, come on, Maggie. You can look after yourself for one night. I could be killed in my bed. We'll come home early. We're too late by then. Don't worry. I'll sort something out. Oh, by the way, which restaurant? Mm, Le Café Nice. You can pick me up on the way. Good night, Maggie. Sweet dreams. 
See you soon, Arthur. You bet. Well, I like the way Deirdre can never find time to come and visit me, but she can take you to see a niece. What <laughs> <laughs> a niece, Mum. Le Café Nice. It's a restaurant. Oh. So you're going out then, are you? Yeah. Just as soon as I've rung Robert and Liz. Oh, it's going to be a foursome, is it? Of course not. Oh, I'm glad. I don't think Liz likes Deirdre very much. Not that anyone does. <laughs> Hello, Liz. Arthur. Listen, I was uh, wondering if you could look after Mum for me tonight. Oh. What about Robert? Uh-huh. What about the dog? Has he got a headache too? <laughs> Sorry. That's just that I want to go out tonight and, well, I don't like leaving Mum on her own. What? Oh, yeah, that's an idea. Uh-huh. Thanks, Liz. And uh, I hope the dog gets better. <laughs> well, that's all fixed. Who's got a headache? Everyone. I think it's an epidemic. Oh, the poor things. It's all right. Liz gave me the phone number of her babysitter. What for? To look after you. I'm not a baby. She's going to look after you anyway. I'm going out. With Deirdre. With Deirdre. I think I'm getting a headache. Huh? <laughs> there. It's done. Have you nailed up the back door? <laughs> no one can get in or out. What about the window? And the window. What about the chimney? <laughs> the chimney? They might come down the chimney. <laughs> Mum, you are not going to get mugged by Santa Claus. <laughs> but if you hear him on the roof, you can light a fire. <laughs> Did you chop the wood? I've had enough of this, Mum. I'm going to get ready. Oh, I'll chop the wood then, will I? When I've finished my bread and water. Now, I offered to make you a proper dinner, but, oh, no, I'm not hungry. I've got a headache. I have got a headache. Mum, I'm just going out for a couple of hours. I'm not sailing around the world. All right. Off you go, then. Leave me to look after the baby. I'm not leaving you to look after a baby. A babysitter is looking after you. And how old is she? How would I know? Sixteen, I think they said. She's a baby. What will she do if someone breaks in and tries to attack me? Help them. <laughs> what was that? How can anyone break in? I've just nailed everything up. Not the front door. I'll nail that up when I leave. Well, how will we get out if the house burns down? How would the house burn down? I might set fire to it if I had one of my turns. What turns? Those turns I have when I set fire to things. Nothing around here looks as though it's been burnt. Oh, doesn't it? Well, that's because I hide all the burnt bits so that you don't worry. <laughs> Don't answer that, Arthur. You don't know who it might be. It's the old lady sitter. <laughs> On the other hand, with a bit of luck, Santa Claus might have come early. Hello. Hi, I'm Lisa, the babysitter. Hey, come in, Lisa. <laughs> Listen, um, did they explain that this is not exactly a baby? Oh, no worries. I look after big kids, too. Easy. Just got to let them know who's boss. Well, this big kid is a bit older than that. Older than you. By how much? A few years. About 50. It's all right. She's my mother. She's just old and I don't like leaving her alone at night. No worries. She's probably like my grandma. We'll get on like a house on fire. I hope not. Oh, Arthur, she's very small. Is this your mother? Yes. Hi there, Mrs. Bear. I'm Lisa. I brought something for you. For me? How nice. It's Jelly beans. I hope that's okay. Just what I wanted. See, usually I look after kids and they love them. Oh, me too. But I always say, not until after you've finished your dinner. Oh, well, that's all right. I've had my bread and water. <laughs> bread and water? Mum wasn't very hungry. Now, uh, I'll just go and get ready and then I'll be off. Mum will show you where everything is. Do I still have to chop the wood? <laughs> No. 
Not tonight. Do you really have to chop the wood? Oh, no, no. Not all the time. <laughs> well, this is nice. Sit down, Angela. Lisa. Lisa? Oh, yes, yes, Lisa. It, it didn't Arthur say you were Angela? No. Oh, well, he must have got it wrong. <laughs> Never mind. You're not frightened, are you, Angela? No. Oh, good. There's no reason to be. Arthur's nailed up the back door and all that. <laughs> what for? Oh, just to be on the safe side. He likes to keep me in at night in case I have one of my turns. <laughs> turns? What turns? Angela. That's who you remind me of, as she was the other babysitter. Oh, couldn't she come tonight? Nice girl. Such a pity. <laughs> what happened to her? Mm, my goodness, these jelly beans are delicious. Mrs. Bear, nothing's going to happen, is it? No, no, no. Probably not. <laughs> we'll just sit quietly here. Just the two of us. Still, if anything did happen... Yes? Oh, but we don't want to talk about nasty things, do we? Uh, the front door will still be open, won't it? No, he'll nail that up before it goes. <laughs> then how will I get out? Well, you're not going, surely. Um... Well, you could climb up the chimney. You forgot about that. Of course, you'd get very dirty. Such a pretty jumper. Mrs. Bear, I think I'd better go. Ah, oh, we were having such a nice visit. Oh, I know, but I forgot something. Uh, homework. It's very important to me and I have to do it. At home. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Sorry. Thanks for the jelly beans. What a nice little girl. Right, all set. Where's Lisa? Who's Lisa? <laughs> Lisa, the babysitter. Oh, you mean Angela. She's gone. I'm sorry, Arthur. You won't be able to go out now. Never mind. The best laid plans of mice and what's the names. What did you do to her? I didn't do anything. I was very nice. You got rid of her, didn't you? Just because I'm going out with Deirdre. Oh, I don't know why you should say that. Doesn't matter to me who you can go out with. You can go out with Jack the Ripper for all I care. Mum, I know you don't understand this, but Deidre and I are still good friends. I like her. No, I don't understand it. In my day, people didn't get divorced, and when they did, they never saw one another again. <laughs> These days, everybody seems to want to be friends. We are friends. And why aren't you still married? Because we just can't get on. So how can you be friends? You used to like Deidre, too. What have you got against her? Just something she did. One thing. She married me. Two things. <laughs> What's the first thing? She made you unhappy. She didn't. We made each other unhappy. And sometimes, when two people have been together for a while, they need some time apart to go out and explore things. To see the world. Meet new people. You haven't been doing any of that. No, but Deidre has. <laughs> yes, she seems to have met lots of people. Lucky old Deidre. Nothing wrong with her, Mother. Oh, so it's all my fault, is it? Of course it's your fault. You're the one stopping me from going out. Oh, I don't think that's right. Not a poor little old lady like me. If I tried to stop you, you could just flatten me. That's very tempting, Mum. <laughs> that's right. That's right, strike your mother. And to think I was 36 hours in labour having you. For heaven's sake. I think we should talk about this, Arthur. Sit down. Not now, Mum. Yes, now, Mum. Deirdre's waiting. Oh, poo to Deirdre. What does she know? She's not a mother. I've got to go. And you can't spare one minute. Not even for your mother. All right. One minute. Starting from when? <laughs> Starting from now. Get on with it. Arthur. Arthur, do you remember when you were little, you were very upset because Mummy was going out to a ball. You were crying and crying. You were very sick. Ten seconds to go. Come on. You had the mumps. 
I've never had the mumps. Someone had the mumps. <laughs> that was Robert, not me. Well, it doesn't matter who it was. I was needed at home and I didn't go out. All right. When you get the mumps, I'll stay at home. <laughs> but right now, babysitter or no babysitter, I'm going out. With Deirdre. With Deirdre. She doesn't like me very much. I can't imagine why. <laughs> when I think of all the dreadful things she did to me. Like what? Oh, yes. Trust you to take her side and pretend not to remember. Well, I can remember very well. Give me one example. No, they were so horrible I forgot them, <laughs> deliberately. <laughs> Mum, I'm sorry. No. Now I remember. She stole my rubber gloves. <laughs> she did it. Yes, she did. They disappeared the day she left. I looked everywhere for them. You lost them. I don't lose things. <sighs> Especially not those rubber gloves. They were given to me as a wedding present. <laughs> Deirdre does not go around knocking off rubber gloves. She hit me. What? She nearly knocked my teeth out. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. You were there. We were just sitting down to dinner when all of a sudden... <laughs> she didn't hit you like that. Yes, she did. You had something stuck in your throat and she gave you a pat on the back. Call that a pet? It was a wolf! Stop hitting me. <laughs> you're only doing this because you're scared that Deirdre and I might get back together again. She's not right for you, Arthur. Who would be right? Geraldine's nice. <laughs> and safely married. You're so damn possessive. I am not. Oh, you won't let me out of your sight. It's not fair, Mum. You've made me a substitute for Dad. How dare you compare yourself to your father? He was a real man. And what's that supposed to mean? At least he made his marriage work. Let me tell you something about Dad. He made his marriage work by giving up everything of his own. He never went out, he never had any fun, he never did a single thing that he wanted to do. It was always you, you, you! Well, I'm not like that. No, no. He, he was a good man. He never went out and left me alone at night. He stuck by me through thick and thin right to the very end. Oh, I bet he was glad to get there. <laughs> get out. Go on, get out of my sight. Where are you going? <laughs> I'm going out. Right. Don't expect me to be here when you get back. Where will you go? I'll go somewhere. I'll go to the park. It's dark outside, Mum. No one goes to the park at night. Yes, they do. Lonely people whose families don't care about them. They all go down to the park and hold meetings. And get beaten up. Yes, by their families. <laughs> Getting into another argument. I'm going out and you're not. You stay here! He gets so cranky sometimes. <laughs> he was like this when he had the mumps. <laughs> it's funny. She's not in a room. She's not anywhere. So she's gone out. Now find your wallet and let's go. I'm hungry. She can't have gone out. I told her not to. I thought we were going to have one night. One night without talking about your mother. We are. We're talking about her now. I don't know where she is. She's probably still mad at you and she's gone to Robert's. Of course. Right. I'll just get my wallet and then we'll be off. Good. I'll get it. Hello. Hello, Robert. Yes, it's me. Just a minute. Hello, Robert? Of course I haven't got Mum on bread and water. What's she been telling you? Well, if Lisa's father wants to ring you up and complain, that's your problem. What? Up the chimney? How could she get up the chimney? Are you mad? <laughs> no, you can't talk to Mum. She's not here. No, I haven't got her out chopping wood. <laughs> She's gone to bed. 
Lots of people go to bed at eight o'clock. No, we're going to dinner. Good night. Well, she's not there. She's incredible. She's not even here and she's still running your life. No, she isn't. Oh, yes, she is. You're about to drop everything and spend the rest of the night searching for her. Uh, no, I'm not. This time, she's on her own. I said we're going to dinner, and we are. <gasps> Good. Right. Oh, listen, on the way, do you mind if we go past the park? <laughs> Well, this is fun, isn't it? Yes. We should do this more often. You think so? Just like old times. It certainly is. I say, Arthur. <laughs> yes, Mum. What a coincidence, us all ending up in the same place like this. Yes. I can't imagine how it happened. Oh, easy. I just got into the taxi and couldn't think where to go, and suddenly the name of this place popped into my head. Funny, wasn't it? Hysterical. Have you two ordered it? No. You'll have to hurry. I'm nearly up to my dessert. But don't worry, I'll slow down and wait for you. <laughs> Dear G, the fish is good. It's a fish restaurant, Mum. <laughs> yes, they've got it on the menu, too. <laughs> I'll go. Oh, take no notice. We can still have a good time. Frankly, it was more fun talking to David about his surfboard. <laughs> good night, Maggie. I should have known better. See you later. Dear dream. <laughs> well, funny old Deirdre. Doesn't she like fish? <laughs> Just as well I came. Otherwise, you'd have to have had dinner all on your own. Come on, Arthur. Cheer up. You wanted a night out. <laughs>